Matrix Mood Review. The young hacker nicknamed Neo has been searching for the terrorist Morpheus for quite some time now, and as he gets closer to discovering him, he is detained by some government types and approached by associates of Morpheus and finally does get the answer to the question, what is the Matrix? Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. I'm not actually going to be giving away what the Matrix is in case anyone watching this video has been living under a rock for the last 12 years or so. This goes into various philosophical themes and science fiction ideas, including themes of reality versus fiction, and several major relig religions are referenced. Not everyone will necessarily perceive it, and that is part of the greatness of this film. You can actually go into it not really looking for any depth and just enjoy it as an action science fiction film. But if you do go in looking for meaning, you will find a lot of it and some very open questions considering the basic structure and the Part of the appeal, at least, of the film being essentially a Hollywood, you know, action sci-fi thriller. The look is excellent. This has two very different environments, I suppose, and both are handled extremely well. We have the modern world and this post-apocalyptic one, and the stark contrast between them, you're never unsure of which one you're currently watching. In addition to that, the, you know, the basic, the he our heroes, you know, wearing cool clothes, sunglasses, it's a very stylish flick, and it's not always necessarily trying to make sense with the look and the design. It's just trying to look really badass, and it usually succeeds. The dialogue is another incredibly strong suit. With a few exceptions, just about every single line in this is literally memorable and quotable. Some of them on repeated viewings and or if you just don't really get into it, you do have to let yourself be, you know, captured by this film and you do have to suspend your disbelief. But really just the lines have this gravitas to them, both in the writing and the delivery, that just, you know, people were quoting this like mad just when it came out. And people did already also young audiences did kind of think that some of the ideas explored in this were made up you know, for this, and that's really not the case. The ideas in this have been explored before and have been in the field of philosophy for quite a while by now. So yes, it did lead to a lot of young, pretentious pocket philosophers, but let's, you know, forgive the movie that and just look at the rest of it. That's not to say that there aren't bad parts, bad aspects to this movie. The acting is not always exactly great. Keanu Reeves is not a big talent, but he's fortunately not asked to do a whole lot. There isn't that much of a range to his character. Others tend not to be that good, but when it really matters, it is fantastic. Hugo Weaving as the utterly hateable, slimy,
basically head villain. He's a government agent and you just hate him from the moment you see him. And you just want to see him go down no matter what. And it's really enjoyable. He's, he's the villain we love to hate. You know, and he has some really great monologues, as does Morpheus, played by Lawrence Fishburne, who also just really delivers these speeches impeccably well. There's a lot of power behind the words, and it does help that the writing is really slick, again, most of the time, when it comes to the dialogue. The special effects, excuse me, are slightly dated today, but they, excuse me, they do still look great, and it should still be noted that this did create some effects that hadn't been seen before. And to clear up a slight misunderstanding that some people have, the whole bullet time thing that this, more or less, I believe it was the first to show it. It's not the slow motion where you see the bullets, it's the camera spinning all the way around, the whole 360 degrees around the subject. You know, at once, without there being movement in it. And I'm pretty sure that, I believe it's John Gaeta invented the photography style for that. So. The pace is really, really good. For a film that spends a lot of time and energy on exposition, it's never actually boring. The first half hour, you have no idea what's going on. After that point, it you get an explanation, again, a lot of exposition, and after that, it more picks up in speed, but you're just never bored. Something's constantly really happening. You just don't offhand know beforehand. It's a movie that definitely, you know, multiple viewings is a pretty good idea. And some things are still up for debate. Again, a lot of open questions with this one. This is also the only Matrix movie that you can watch and just only watch this one. It's like with Star Wars A New Hope. If you only watch this one movie and pretend like there's nothing else, or the first Terminator movie, it works. You know, it doesn't need any more. It didn't need to be a franchise, although it was obviously always planned as such, but they didn't know if they were gonna get to do more, as I believe Lucas, George Lucas didn't know if he was gonna get to do more than one Star Wars, so they Put a, lot of, put a lot of effort into making it work as just a stand standalone story. You know, you don't need the other movies. That did harm the other movies some, but I'll get into that in those reviews. And really, again, even if you watch it just wanting cool action and, you know likable enough main characters, despicable villains, it delivers. You know, part of the point of this movie, what the Wachowski brothers wanted to do was make a, an action film that actually challenged the viewer, that made him think. And they really succeeded. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.